Accomplished, born in Ottawa, writer Robert J. Sawyer is one of only eight people ever and the only Canadian to win all three of science fiction's top awards for Best Novel of the Year. He is our imaginative futurist, some call the dean of sci-fi. Sawyer turns out science fiction that makes us think, dream, ponder a lot, and perhaps wake up. His newest trilogy is three intriguing tales, one called Wake, one called Watch, and the final called Wonder. It is my pleasure to welcome Robert J. Sawyer to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Well, nice to meet you. Thank you. I, an award-winning science fiction writer. No kidding. No kidding. Not that anybody's counted, but 45 awards to date, so mm. a nice well, shelf. <laughs> a nice shelf. Yes. When you were a young lad, did you read science fiction? Did you have a dream of becoming an award-winning science fiction writer one well, day? Well, I did, absolutely. I was reading The Greats, Isaac Asimov, Arthur mm. C. Clarke, for instance, and they had won these awards, the Hugo Award and the Nebula Award, and that was sort of my fantasy, was someday that I might be nominated for those awards. So, so to have won them uh, is the most wonderful thing that could happen to somebody who had my childhood dreams to grow up to be a science fiction writer. I'm just thrilled. Mm, how did you learn to do it? Uh, by reading the great masters. You know, I'm, I firmly believe that. I have taught creative writing myself, so I don't, I don't poo-poo on creative <laughs> right. writing teaching, but the best way to become a good writer is to read good books attentively, and then as soon as you finish it, maybe go back and start reading it again. Now that you know what has been done, see how the author set it up. See the techniques in action. That's the best way to learn. And a good book always lingers in your mind. Absolutely. For a long time, in your case. Uh, where do you write? Oh, I write in my home normally, which is in Toronto, but I travel so much. You know, after I leave the studio here, I'm going directly to the airport to go to Tokyo. From Tokyo, I'm going to Budapest. So a lot of my writing is done in airline seats, too, with my little netbook computer. I, it's a portable profession. I wouldn't be able to do it uh, and have the lifestyle that I have if I wasn't always traveling. Well, as you know, there was a day when the computer was evil, or yes. thought of as evil, and it, uh, <laughs> your profession was not portable. Well, that's right, and science fiction really only gave us evil visions. It gave us the Matrix, where we're subjugated, the Terminator, where we're eliminated, and Star Trek's the Borg, where we're absorbed. But it didn't give us any options where machines might exceed our intelligence, but we might still survive with our essential liberty, individuality, and humanity intact. And in this trilogy, Wake, Watch, and Wonder, I try to put a positive a scenario out there because if all you have are the negative visions they become self-fulfilling prophecies. Very much so and you know uh, uh, Margaret Atwood uh, wrote Oryx and Crate. I do know that. <laughs> and it's a little dark. It's a very dark book. I like Margaret Atwood very much as a person. Mm -hmm. She's a very talented writer but she and I part company on whether the world is getting to be a better place or a worse place. To me, I look at today, 2011, we're way better off than we were in 1911. She looks at today in 2011 and she thinks we're way worse off mm -hmm. than we were in 1911. So we have very different views. I'm a utopian writer, and she's a dystopian writer. Or a draconian writer. And so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, she's a friend. So <laughs> She's wonderful. I mean, yes. she, you know, uh, Canada would not be the place it is, and Canadian literature would not have mm. the stature it has on the world stage without Margaret's contributions. Tell me about Web Mind. What is a Web Mind? This trilogy, Wake, Watch, and Wonder, WWW, is about the World Wide Web gaining consciousness. At some point, this is true, some point in this decade, the World Wide Web and the internet that underlies it will have as many interconnections as a human brain has synapses. It will be as complex as a human mind. When that happened in our evolutionary past, we woke up, became self-aware, and became conscious. Mm -hmm. So the premise of this trilogy, the most recent one being Wonder, is that the World Wide Web may do the same thing. This thing that we interact with every day, that knows every email you've ever written, including all the contradictory ones, knows every website you've ever visited, including the ones you don't want anybody to know about, might become self-aware and start mm -hmm. having a relationship with not just you, but all seven billion of us. Wow, so it becomes an entity. Absolutely. In, in its own. A character. Right, a character, and a million webcam eyes That's right. are it's, out there, and they know, he knows, what is it? The entity knows. Everything. The web mind knows everything. Everything about everything everybody. Everything I've, I've ever done, done, said, written, 
and or anybody else in the world. As everything anybody has ever said about you as well online, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in a private email or a chat session or on yes. Twitter or Facebook or whatever, it's all brought together and web mind this consciousness becomes, I use a quote at the beginning of Wonder, the current book from Sergey Brin, who is co-founder mm -hmm. of Google. Mm -hmm. And his quote is, the uh, perfect search engine would be like the mind of God would know everything about everybody all the time. And this conscious entity, WebMind in the trilogy, Wake, Watch and Wonder, has mm -hmm. that capability. And WebMind is the big, 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 big brother. Well, that's and right. And sister. It, it and is. And aunt and uncle. That's right. And of course, whenever we invoke that phrase, big mm -hmm. brother, we do it in a ominous way. Whenever you say big brother is watching you, it's a very scary thing. But we do live in a society where cameras are everywhere, including on our phones and on mm -hmm. street corners. We're being watched all the time anyways. So rather than give up on the notion of surveillance, it's never going to go away. I'm trying to find a way in which a surveillance society can still be a place of liberty and dignity. And that's a lot about what Wake, Watch, and Wonder are talking about. And if you ask the question, is there a cure for cancer? Yes. Uh, a complex disease, that's many right. diseases. If you could gather information from every soul on this earth, perhaps the cure this for happens cancer in wonder. would that's be right. there. That's right. We've done so much research for so many decades. So many different disciplines have mm -hmm. been brought to bear on the question of solving cancer. And the position that I take in the novel is, if somebody could actually read all that research, no one oncologist has read even 1% of the research, and synthesize it all, we might already have the answer. And WebMind does that in Wonder, the third book in the trilogy. And I'm sure it does it quickly because you find the thread yes. that runs through all the research, through all the labs, through all the uh, science, and aha. You have the light bulb, light bulb the moment. I doubt you can put web mind back into the bottle. This is there's a character, of course, in the trilogy trying to do that, who says, once you open Pandora's box, you've got a matter of days before you can't ever close it again because the intelligence of a machine grows very rapidly over time. Whereas we take decades to mm -hmm. learn even, you know, the basic things we learn through university it takes us two decades to get to that point. Every minute it's getting smarter and brighter. And there's a very narrow window in which if we decide we don't want this super intelligence for us to have any say in whether or not it exists. And the, the trilogy of novels deals right. with that as well. A super intelligence and artificial consciousness now. How did it begin? Uh, take me uh, to Caitlin Dexter. Caitlin Dexter is my main sorry, character. Dector, with you know, it's, it's, in some ways it's very similar to the story of Helen Keller who was blind and deaf in sensory deprivation and the people around her didn't think there really was a civilized, conscious, sophisticated being in there. There was just a wild animal mm -hmm. as far as her parents were concerned. This miracle worker, the title of the play about Helen Keller, uh, teacher Annie Sullivan came to her. She had been formerly blind and given sight, Annie Sullivan had been, and worked with Helen Keller. And Caitlin Dechter is this formerly blind teenage girl who recognizes that in the chaotic background of the World Wide Web, there is a sophisticated entity, and she becomes its miracle worker, its mentor, bringing it out into interactivity mm. with all of us. Am I giving too much away to uh, ask you how uh, she begins to see? Oh, she has a, a congenital blindness, and she gets an implant uh, by a Japanese information technologist behind her left eye that uh, allows her to finally make sense of the chaotic light mm -hmm. signals that are falling on her retina, but it's also hooked up to the World Wide Web so the researcher in Japan can monitor it, and thereby hangs the tail. The, uh, she also begins to see the infrastructure of the World Wide Web in a way no one has ever perceived it before. It gives new meaning to, and somebody said this, not me, iPod instead of I, E Y E pod. That's right, I use that, the iPod. That's what she calls her little signal processing mm -hmm. package. Now, many humans believe, as you know, that machines cannot have emotions. Yes. Uh, WebMind says, I have emotion or I'm learning. Absolutely. And you know, we have uh, some of the most sophisticated computers right now play chess. When you look at a game of chess, what a computer does is it looks at all the possible moves. And some of them it will like. That move will get me closer to winning. And some it will dislike. Right. That move will get you closer to beating me. Well, if you have likes and dislikes in a hierarchy, then you have the basis of emotion. Mm -hmm. I like this. 
I feel good when I get that. I dislike this, I feel bad when I get that. It, it, it is all really uh, quite plausible that yes. machines may have feelings. Well, and you point out in here that we as humans have uh, choices. Yes. Uh, we can choose to value happiness or not value right. happiness. We can uh, uh, value war or not value war. That's right. One human perhaps could have stopped Hitler. Yes, uh, absolutely. If he had made that decision or she had made that decision. Oh, I think the books are very empowering. They're about this notion that we do take responsibility for our actions. And we can make these choices. We can choose mm -hmm. uh, what is important to us. And WebMind, and I use this phrase a little bit of a pun, WebMind seeks, uh, seeks to maximize the net happiness. Net, of course, in terms of, of the internet. The net happiness of the human race is what it ultimately decides mm. is the most valuable thing that it can bring to the world. And I think that's a very positive vision. But we can all do that. We can choose to be negative people or we can choose to be positive people. And it really is an effort of will, a decision we mm -hmm. make, what kind of interactivity we're going to have with the rest of the world. Yes, thoughts are real forces. They are, absolutely. But if you are head of the Pentagon yes. or CSIS yes. or the Mossad and you knew that WebMind was hacking into everything yes. that's supposed to be secret, I suspect, You'd like to shut it down. And that happens in the trilogy as well. A, a, a character named Peyton Hume from the National Security Agency of the United States, two agents from CSIS in Ottawa figure in the novel, uh, all of whom are very concerned that, you know, governments like being the ones who have all the power. When mm -hmm. something usurps that position, something is even more powerful than the government, governments get very nervous. <clears throat> Excuse me, get very, very nervous. Yes. And uh, as you know so well, having a good discussion is, is like having riches. So uh, if you're in the Oval Office yes. trying to figure this out, should we shut it down? If we shut it down, will the world allow us to shut it down? Uh, will WebMind get us? Will there not be any more us? That's There's right. so many questions. Uh, we'll come back with Robert J. Sawyer. His uh, trilogy is complete. Wonder is the last one.